This is Vessel from OnlyWeather.com. In this video, we're taking a look at gale force winds, what they are and how they occur. I think it's fair to say that most of us are very familiar with wind in their various forms, but mostly we associate them with some kind of weather condition, especially some type of storm system like a hurricane, maybe lightning or thunderstorms, and even obviously tornadoes. But occasionally, especially near the coast, you get these strong persistent winds that just seem to last an entire day. And they're sometimes so strong they can literally blow you off your feet. Well, these are gale force winds. So we need to get a better description or a rather a definition of them first before we can continue. Uh, if anything in this video is a bit unclear or you need any, ad any additional information, you can just click on the link in the description below this video, which leads to the full article explaining everything in a lot more detail. So, like I said, if anything is a bit unclear or you need additional information, just follow that link. Okay, so before we can really start to understand what gale force winds are, we just need to look at a definition first. What are gale force winds? A gale force wind, or gale, is a strong persistent wind with a minimum speed of 50 km per hour or 31 miles per hour and a maximum speed of 102 km per hour or 63 miles per hour, which are typically associated with coastal regions. There are four different categories of gale force winds, according to the Beaufort scale. Well, that's a description of gale force winds, but now we need to look at how they occur and why where they occur and why they occur. Um, like I said during the introduction, they mostly occur in coastal regions. They're not limited to coastal regions, but due to the characteristics of the sea and the land and the way they re react to um, temperature changes, um, results in different um, air pressure systems. Um, as I mentioned during other videos, a uh, difference between a high and a low pressure system, the gradient in between them is what basically what's cause wind, causing wind movement in the first place. So if you, I'm going to describe that right now, but if you need any additional information about what uh, high and low pressure is and the relation to the creation of wind, I also left a link to that particular video in the description below, so if you'd like to read up more about wind itself and how it is formed in the first place, you can just follow that link as well. Okay, getting back to gale force winds, uh, there are basically two factors involved in the creation of these uh, strong winds. Uh, the first one, like I said, is the strong pressure gradient that's created when a very high and a very low pressure system is situated very close to each other which is the case in coastal regions in certain circumstances but also the surface of the land the topography of the land near the coast as well and inland also plays a role let's have a look at those two factors go force winds are primarily determined by two factors first the difference between a high pressure system and a low pressure system or rather the intensity of the difference between them as symbolized by the pressure gradient Secondly, the topography or the physical structure of the land over which the wind flows. Let's start with the difference between the high and low pressure system first. In another video while describing the creation of a wind, I already described and used the surface of the ocean and the surface of the land um, in the creation of different air pressure systems to illustrate the uh, creation of wind. So I'm linking to that in the description below, but let's just quickly use this as an example as this is very applicable. Now, near the coast, or at the coast, the cold waters of the ocean takes much longer to warm up due to solar radiation than the warm surface of the land. As a result, over the cold surface of the water, a high pressure system occurs. At the same time, over the warm surface of the land, a low pressure system occurs. Now, if the water is particularly cold and the warm land specifically very quickly, the intensity of the high pressure system is pretty extreme while the low pressure system is an extreme low pressure system that forms over land if it warms up very quickly so there's a quite a big difference in the pressure systems between land and ocean and since wind flows from a high pressure system to a low pressure system and in this case there's a big difference between the two do the pressure gradient is quite steep and as a result your wind movement is much faster and as a result you'll experience gale force strength winds at the coast and this is the reason why your coastal regions experience um, gale force winds to such an extent. So it doesn't necessarily just appear at coastal regions but typically this is the scenario that you'll experience that results in the creation of gale force winds. And this brings us to our second point. 
the topography or the physical structure of the land, especially as it pertains to coastal regions. Now we all know coastal cities like San Francisco and there's a reason why it is called the Windy City. Uh, if you look at the place where the Golden Gate Bridge is situated, like in this illustration, uh, it's flanked on both sides by a hillside or land mass and wind where the gate, where Golden Gate Bridge is situated is funneled in this region between the two banks or heads on either side which can either compound the already strong wind or actually create, take a small sea breeze and through the funneling effect create gale force winds. Now this is not the only example or the only coastal city that experiences this. In Cape Town, South Africa, between Table Mountain and Signal Hill next to it, there's a small opening where wind often funnels through the opening and create very strong gale force winds. Now, like I said, this can crea be created by through a compounding effect where wind a really strong gale force wind already created through a high low pressure system is compounded by the funneling effect or it takes a normal sea breeze and air being forced to funnel through a, a confined space creates your strong gale force winds which are experienced in this region. Okay, so that is how uh, gale force winds occur and why they occur where they do. One more thing I need to mention is the fact that the definition I've given in the start of this video was based on the Beaufort scale or the Beaufort wind scale. Now the Beaufort wind scale uh, grades or rates um, winds um, on a scale from 0 to 12 depending on their wind speed from absolute no air movement to hurricane strength winds. So it's very applicable to use them um, or use this scale system to judge gale force winds and see where they sit on the scale compared to other types of wind. However, different countries use different um, criteria or other wind speeds, different wind speeds um, than the, that which is mentioned in the Beaufort scale. And they no, don't necessarily break it down into four different categories. For instance, the United States Weather Service have their own completely different um, categorization of gale force winds. So uh, let's just have a close look at the Beaufort wind scale, wind scale and why you would want to use that to judge um, the strength of a gale force wind. So let's take a look at the whole Beaufort scale first. As you can see, it's clearly numbered on a scale from 0 to 12, with calm conditions being 0, winds below 1 mile per hour or 2 kilometers per hour, going all the way up to hurricane strength at number 12, with wind speeds of over 73 miles per hour or over 118 kilometers per hour. Another advantage of that, as you can see for yourself, uh, it also lists the conditions both over land and sea associated with each Beaufort number. In this image, I've zoomed into the four categories that's defined as different kinds of gale by the Beaufort scale. What makes this especially handy is the fact that you can judge according to wind speed the strength or the type of gale you're experiencing with the associated conditions. You can also now view it in context of other wind conditions which make this use of the Beaufort scale especially useful. And these are gale force winds in a nutshell basically. These strong persistent winds mostly experienced at the coast which can last an entire day and blow so strongly that they can literally blow you off your feet and cause some minor to moderate uh, infrastructure damage. So I hope that's been helpful and I hope that explained everything. Like I said during the introduction, if anything is a bit unclear or you need any additional information, I've left a link to the full article in the description below the video. So um, if you need additional information, just click on that link. I hope this has been helpful. Um, if you like this kind of video and you would like to receive upcoming videos describing other weather phenomena, weather the different weather conditions, how they occur, what the characteristics are, uh, click the subscribe button as well as the notification button next to it and you'll be reminded as soon as another video gets released. Like I said, I hope you enjoyed this and hope this has been helpful. And until next time, keep your eye on the weather. Cheers.